What's up, y'all? It's your boy E Bait Fight Predictions in the building, and I'm back with another video. It's a little late, I already know, <laughs> but uh, this is your top 15 fights to make in 2022. This is the new year edition. Uh, little videos that I'm coming out with. Uh, I did one for last year, you know, uh, and I'm probably gonna, obviously going to keep it going. Uh, and then tomorrow, probably this late too, I'll drop the, uh, the uh, I think the top dark courses of each division to look out for um, in, I guess, for 2022, and I did that last year. Uh, and then I'm probably not going to be posting a lot of videos until, you know, obviously fight week for Cater and Giga. So I'm probably going to give myself a week off. Obviously, I'm going to be, you know, tape studying and doing stuff like that uh, in the meantime. But no videos. Unless it's like a breaking news video, I, I'll drop that. I still got to do a fight talk. I forgot about that. So I, you know what? Yeah, I got something else to drop. I, I'll hit my boy Kendall about that if, he, if, if he's trying to do that. Um... But yeah, man, let's get to it, man. Top 15 fights to make in 2022, man. Uh, and let's get down to it. Uh, at number 15. Now, obviously, I already know Marlon Marais is booked. But Marlon Marais versus Cody Garbrandt. I mean, both guys have probably some of the most suspect chins in their division. And for me, I just want to see the fight. I want to see who's the better of the two. I, you know, to me, I feel like Cody is probably a more complete fighter. He can wrestle um he can strike he has power um marlon i mean marlon can wrestle too but i i, I would say marlon i mean the only time i ever really saw marlon wrestle was against uh was against rob font and he gassed like a mofo they both fought rob so yeah it's interesting i don't know uh it's interesting performance both guys had against rob and then Cody went out so sad against Kaikar France. But here's the thing about Cody in the Kaikar France fight. I don't know why Cody doesn't get a pass for it. Um, I mean, TJ got a pass for the, the flyweight debut. You know, obviously I get it. Cody Garbrandt had a better weight cut. So it's like it's kind of hard to give him a pass for it. You know, if Cody's saying, oh, it was the best weight cut of his life. Why are we going to say it was a bad weight cut? And I get that. That's, that's good logic, right? Because if the guy isn't complaining, why are we complaining, right? But, I mean... I mean, Cody's a big guy, man. I, I, I've always thought Cody's very muscular. He's always been, you know, top heavy. Uh, I know he's, he said himself that he's a legit flyweight, but um, I always thought Cody was a legit bantamweight. Uh, I remember when people used to say, like, TJ Dillashaw was bigger than Cody. I just never agree with it. You, you just got to look at the goddamn screen. Cody's the bigger man, but I guess I guess TJ weighed more than him. I don't know how, but it is what it is. Um... I, I like the fight a lot. Um, you know, Marlon has more of a kick bait, you know, kind of kicking. What's that called? Uh, I don't even know what I was trying to say. Uh, a kick bait style uh, <laughs> going into this. I am still recovering from my sickness. So, uh, but, you know, I had to make this video. Um, but besides that, um, it's a good matchup. I like the fight a lot, man. You know, they, they match up really, really well with each other. Uh, I think. Uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, uh, but I think Cody has a real good chance of winning this fight. Um, I see a lot of people just saying straight up Marlon, 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 but like it was a bad way, uh, not a bad wake up, but it was a wake up. He, sh it was, he shouldn't have fought Kai Car friends. It's just, it was simple. He was doing it for a title shot and that's all he was doing it for. Um, he wouldn't be fighting there. That isn't like, he doesn't No, it 135. He's always fought at 135. He's, he's a, that's what he, oh, that's all he's ever going to do. Like, that's just a fact. Um, but, I mean, Marlon does hit hard. They both hit hard. It's just, yeah, the battle of the, the glass cannons. Uh, both hit each other. Double KO would be crazy. Uh, <laughs> whoever gets up first wins. Um, but, yeah, I mean, both guys can win. Uh, at number 14, I got to go with RDA versus Chandler. I know Chandler's saying he wants to fight Tony and da 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 It's in the works. I know they had that little exchange on Twitter I saw. Dude, like, Tony... I know this is such a side note. I would also like to see Tony versus RDA, by the way. But uh, aside, Tony is like the weirdest caption game, or not even just caption game on Instagram, just catch a uh, caption game on general social media. The way he types, oh my god, and the emojis, like bro, <laughs> it's insane. I mean, his fan base. Uh, they were a menace, y'all. Like, like, I mean, if you don't remember, 
Those Tony Ferg Ferguson fans were a menace back in the day. But the fact they know what he means every time he writes, I, 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 it is what it is. Um, it's a, besides that, you know, if we're just ignoring the Tony and uh, <laughs> oh, fucking, uh, Tony and Chan Chandler drama, um, Chandler versus RDA is a great stylistic matchup. It makes sense that, uh, you know, for RDA and uh, you know obviously I feel like Chandler at this moment should play gatekeeper a little bit he, you know he got two highly ranked guys got a fucking title shot for God's sakes you know and um yeah I, I feel like he he owes that um obviously he's older so you want to use him for the you know best he got you want to put him in the best fights he can be but I feel like I don't think he's gonna be UFC world champion and I don't think I'm you know bursting anyone's bubble with that but um He's a championship caliber fighter. I think he should be doing championship caliber things. You know, guys have to do this thing. They have to play gatekeeper sometimes. And um, I, I would love to see uh, that fight. Stylistically, it's a great fight. Uh, I mean, Chandler can knock him the fuck out. Uh, and that's a definitive factor. But uh, if RDS is super tough, uh, keeps really, really good defense, you know, shoots for takedowns when he needs to, attack the body, um, basically survived that first round. I, th I think he wins the fight. Uh, he's a tech very technical fighter. And, I uh, mean, RDA is good, man. He is a former champion for a reason. Uh, he's not a loser at lightweight. I mean, last guy he lost to at lightweight, I think, was was Tony. It was Tony. Uh, and we all, I mean, I'm not going to say we all know, but that eye poke played a big factor in that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's in the past. Uh, I'd love to see the fight, though, if they ran it back. That's what I really want to see. But, um, yeah, RDA, uh, RDA versus Chandler is a great fucking fight. I, I, I think it doesn't disappoint at all. I think they match up really well. You could see a crazy knockout in the first round, or you could see RDA breaking them in the championship rounds or in the third round or whatever. You know, I just, just think it's going to be a really good fight. Like, it's not going to be boring. Um, and, and, yeah, at number 13, Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. That's the fight to make. I mean, that is probably going to happen. I'm pretty confident it's going to happen. Uh, D-Rod is going to get lit up. Kevin, I mean, a lot of people forget. Kevin went out there and made Buckley look like a fool. I know Buckley's a bum. I don't know if someone's going to tell me that. So he's a bum, no. And I get that. But um, he's going to light him up. I'm tired of this D-Rod has good boxing and that, that, like, just, this, this little, this, I don't know when this started happening, D-Rod ain't a bum, I'm not saying he's not, but he's not fucking God, alright, and, uh, I, I know he beat my boy Kevin, and I gotta, I gotta accept that, but, you know, D-Rod's little, you know what I'm saying, you're little, D-Rod, you're still little, and, uh, Kevin's a big boy, man, and he's going to make him look little, uh, I hope Kevin says that to him at the stare downs. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kevin is going to jab his face off. If Dolby looks like Wonder Boy against you, you're doing something wrong. Uh, D-Rod doesn't know how to deal with long, lengthy fighters. The only guy that he beat was long and lanky was Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee at the time had Dewey Cooper in his corner. I've been saying this for fucking years. Dewey ain't good for Kevin. I don't know why, and I don't understand how Dewey's a fucking... It, Dewey might be the only MMA coach, I think, right now that actually coaches professional boxers. And everyone knows in the, in the boxing community about Dewey Cooper is that he's not good at holding pads. Alright? Like, it's not no secret. I've talked to legit guys that know Dewey Cooper, that were in the Mayweather gym, that seen him before. I'm not breaking no news. And I ain't talking shit. Right. But do Dewey's a good coach. Don't get it twisted. But look how. Just look. Alright. How Kevin boxes. The man has long ass arms. He doesn't know how to throw a fucking jab to save his life. Go look at Dewey Cooper hold pass for Rampage Jackson. Alright. I posted it on my Twitter. Go. Just go look. The man can't hold pads. I follow him on IG. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. I like him a lot. But I had to hold my tongue on this one. But everyone knows it. 
All right, they just keep him around because he's a good dude. He's a former kickboxer. Uh, he's a former fighter. Um, but I mean, he ha he works better with power punchers, you know. Uh, he has this one heavyweight boxer that just fought. Uh, was it George Joyce? I think it was George Joyce or Joseph Parker. I get some of the I get those two guys mixed up sometimes. I think Tafan something, right? And um, the guy did all right. He did all right. He's a really good power puncher from Cameroon. Right, but he lost. Right, um, Francis Ngannou, power puncher. He does great with him. These guys on these unorthodox heavyweights. He knows how to hold pass for guys. Even Rampage Jackson. Uh, Rampage wasn't doing good on the pass, but you can give him a pass because he has power. You don't have to be too technical if you have real legit power. I can give it a pass. And if you're a heavyweight, you're a fucking heavyweight. You don't have to be technical. But Kevin can't be like that. He's he's 170 and 155. It's a different kind of division. He needs different kind of coaching. And um, I I went on a diatribe about how Dude Cooper sucks, but it but my point is, <laughs> D Rod got the luckiest day of his life because Kevin was with Cooper. Kevin went a few months with TriStar, and you saw what he did in two fight camps. All right, went tooth and nail with Charles Oliveira. Okay, he did good. He didn't go out like, I mean, he went out like a hoe, like, you know, fucking Dustin. But still, he did good, all right? Potentially, I mean, obviously, I gave a, you could give a round to Charles, man. But some people had Kevin up 2-0 because of the ground control. Chandler or even Dustin can't really say that. When he when Kevin was trying to start, he, he made real improvements. I, at first, I used to give Dewey the credit for the Greg Gillespie kick. But no more. I don't know. He don't get no credit for that. I'm done. He. He ruined Kevin. And thank God Kevin's going to fucking Stanford MMA. I blame him for all of this. But, um. But good on you, D Rock, for getting that. But you're going to face the music when Kevin's whooping your ass with that jab. Slapping you up a little bit. Jabbing to the body. And making you look like a fool. But that's a fight to make, man. It's a great fight for Kevin at welterweight. And I, I'd love to see it. Uh, at number 12, Luke Rockhold versus Andre Muniz. I want to see this fight so bad because of the jiu-jitsu. Uh, I think Rockhold hasn't really had an opportunity to use his best game. And let him fight a guy that can really, really, you know, grapple. Uh, Andre's looked fucking amazing last year. Just doing what he did to Jacare and then Eric Anders back-to-back. -back. Eric Anders was coming off some wins. Oh, just coming off one win actually against uh, Stewart, but um, but honestly, he was gonna beat Stewart in that first fight. But uh, but yeah, man. Um, <coughs> I was I was coughing for a second. I mean, he looked he looked really good uh, against then uh, against um, against Anders. Really made it look easy. He showed that the levels to his game and Rockhold is legit on the ground. People forget how good Rockhold's on the ground, man. He made David Branch a former fucking Henzo... Not former. Uh, I mean, uh, he has the black... A Henzo Gracie black belt tap out to strikes, you know? The ground... He made him look like a baby on the ground, man. Um, you know, he, he did he did all right with Jacare on the ground, actually. He didn't submit Jacare, though, but he, he you know, he beat him uh, in his prime. And... Uh, it was a close fight, too. Don't get it twisted. It was close. But Luke Rockhold versus Andre Muniz would be dope, man. It would be dope. I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. Uh, and, it, you know, and, uh, I feel like Luke has to take the fight, man. If he really wants to fight, he should fight. take this fight. Enough of the fucking... I mean, dude, like, the, the, he's living his best life. I'm not mad at him, but, like, come on, Luke. Either you're retired or you're not, and I, I know he's. I think he's dealing with an injury right now, so he's he's nursing that. But like, come on, bro. Enough is enough, man. Like, we want to see you compete. I think this guy can still make a run. He's better than a lot of these middleweights, man. Middleweight is so garbage. I think he can do it, y'all. Luke got a chance. I don't care if nobody's. Luke got a chance, bro. If Sean Strickland can make it that far, Luke fucking can do it too, bro. I don't give up. At this age, Luke can do it. At fucking what, 36, 37? He can fucking do it. But, um, but yeah. Uh, at number 11, 
Paulo Costa versus Ian Kutalaba. Obviously, Ian Kutalaba is fighting Ryan Spawn. Um, but after Eon does what he's supposed to do, hopefully, pray to Jesus Christ, <laughs> he beats Ryan Spawn. Uh, I'd love to see Paulo go up. I think those guys match up really well. Paulo doesn't have to be worried about the guy being too big than him. Eon's actually, I feel like, a smaller light heavyweight. Um, and yeah, they both fucking... Dude, honestly, the stare down should be like you gotta pay for that like that's gonna be fucking comedy bro they're gonna go crazy man that's gonna be insane that's gonna be worth it and uh yeah it would be a barn burner man i think it'd be a great fight um i think eon could beat him honestly i really do or Acosta might murder him i don't know that's a hard that's a, that's a hard one to call actually because eon looked amazing against clark uh, it's gonna really be okay. We're gonna, I feel like I'm gonna see because Clark isn't the greatest in the world, but uh, if if Eon beats Spawn, damn near he's gonna have uh, Eon Kuzlov is gonna have Anthony Smith's best wins that made him fucking number four in the world supposedly. I don't know how that motherfucker did that, but uh, got the whole world fooled again. He fooled him again. The world found out he was a bum. And then he tricked him like that. I don't, man. Anthony Smith, respect. I, I, I can't even disrespect that. Like, he, he tricked everybody. Uh, hey, respect. <laughs> but um, if Eon can do that and look good against Spawn, I think I'd be confident in taking him against Costa. But if he looks subpar against uh, Spawn, because I mean Spawn, he's gonna have that reach. That's gonna be something that Eon's gonna have to battle against. But um, if he looks subpar, I'd probably. I, I would take Costa over him. I like, like, I don't hate Costa. I know he fought my boy Marvin, and I was kind of hard on him. But, um, Costa's not bad. It's just, it's weird. Uh, I mean, he's probably, I know he's fighting the uh, the light heavyweight push, so uh, I think he still wants to stay at middleweight. So we're, we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see what happens there. At number 10, this might be a curveball. Uh, Pantoja versus Pedro Munoz. Um, I think Pedro should go down to 125. I think his chin is good enough to take the hit from the weight because he normally doesn't get chinned a lot. Um, because a lot of these guys, I mean, Garbrandt, suspect chin. You know, TJ, I mean, TJ's always had a suspect chin, right? God fucking, man, dude, John Dodson had him doing the chicken leg. Day. Man, dude looked like a baby deer against John. Look, go watch that fight. John Dodson did him dirty. Oh, my God. Guy did him dirty, and then fucking Sudo had his way with him. But um, and he's always getting a fucking drop. He got dropped against Corey. Um, I I think Pedro might do. I I, I th he even said he wanted to go down to one twenty five when he fought Aldo. I think the pay you know the Dominic Cruz fight. I think he took it because it was a big name. It was uh, it gave him uh, you know big motivation and shit like that. But uh, against Panto ah, you know what? Nah, they can't fight. They're teammates. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I just that just hit me. All right, scrap that. Oh man, I didn't even think about their teammates. That's not gonna work. Oh my god, how did I not think about that? Oh my god. All right, uh, all right, scrap that. We're gonna number nine. <laughs> I forgot they were teammates. They're American top team. Oh my god. Well, I was thinking of more of a situation for, like, you know, Pantoja. He got nothing to do, you know, with this bullshit-ass Figueredo Moreno trilogy, right? And then Askrov got Kai Carl friends. Like, he's fucking kind of the ugly girl at the ball, even though he, he literally is Moreno's dad. He there. This is, like, like, proven medically. There's paperwork. There's, like, blood samples. There was a Mori episode about the whole entire situation. This man owns Moreno. Um, but, I mean, he's just the ugly girl at the, you know, the ball party. In the great words of Dan Hooker. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess he's... Uh, <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess Pedro and Pantoja can just go be friends. They don't have to fight each other <laughs> in 2022. At number nine, Max Holloway versus Charles Oliveira. I, I don't... I don't, I don't know. Uh, if I'm Charles Oliveira, and let's say I beat Justin Gaethje, right? And then let's say Benil Darius beats 
Islam Makachev. But let's say Max Holloway decides that I could get embarrassed against Alexander Volkanovsky, right? And look like a complete utter coward against him when I get flatlined. Uh, and my fans talked all that mess. And I, and I tried to go out there and back it up and get embarrassed. Or I could challenge Charles, who I have a win over. And try to go for a second belt and say, and then really have an argument at goat talk. You know, what would you do? Uh, and Charles, why not get a win back? Right, it was an injury, this and that. Right, uh, I know some people say that you know Charles faked the injury. There was never a real injury report, or they, you know, the fucking medical exam said it was fake. Or I don't know. I. I I forgot I was reading something about it, but I, I never got the full gist of the story. But it looked like he got hurt. I don't think he would fake that. It was you don't fake stuff like that in a fight. But um, you know, it it, it would be interesting. Um, I'd like to see it. You know, I'd like to see Max get whooped on again. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I I'd, I think Charles would have his way with him. I think he takes him down and submits his uh his dumbass. But um, I, I think that's. I'm just saying, you want to make money, if you're a promoter, I think that's a fight to make, you know, um, I know fucking Benil is going to be mad, I'm just saying, Benil wins that fight, that's, they're not going to want to give him a title, he will deserve it, but they're not going to want to be like, oh, let's give it to Benil versus, they're not going to want to, Benil versus Charles, like, Benil's my boy, but well, he ain't selling pay-per-views, that's just a fact, I don't think he's ever, this is going to be the first, I think, fight night he's ever headlined. I th I'm not even sure. Like, maybe I think he might have called main event with Michael Johnson a while back, and he made a poster. And I think he made the poster for UFC 260 with Tony Ferguson. But besides that, the guy's you know he's never been like a big name at lightweight. So um, you got Max, or you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think who wants to see Max versus Volk three. Honestly, I want to see it so Volk can just kill this man. On the low. Because I'm getting tired. Of these clowns. So. You know. It is what it is. <laughs> Said my piece. At number 8. For my boy Fuego. For my boy Fuego. For my dog Fuego. Nate Diaz. Versus Tony Ferguson. Uh, <laughs> I hope this fight happens. For Fuego's sake. <laughs> I don't need to see him out here crying because Dustin took the fight uh, and calling Dustin out. Now, honestly, I would trust Dustin with the Nate Diaz fight because I really honestly think Dustin can go finish that schmuck. But, I mean, um, hopefully, you know, I mean, maybe we can give my boy Fuego an early, early, you know, birthday gift. I think February. Maybe they can give him that fight announcement. It would make him happy. Um, I think, I mean, I... If gun to my head, you tell me I gotta pick. I'm picking probably Tony. Uh, I, right now, I honestly hate Nate, and Tony's not as annoying. Is and I think the Tony fans have been humble. They've been pretty chill. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, and they're not as bad as this goddamn jabroni. Um, this this dude thinks he's a goddamn fucking. He thinks he's a god for one minute of success, dude. Calls everyone a fucking pussy. Acts like he'll beat them all. And all he does is lose. That's all he... I, I, I really... like. Oh, Anthony Pettis? That's really cool. That's dope. Enjoy that. Like, come on, bro. Like, oh my god. Jorge was out there murdering you. Kicking you around. Like, you know, one thing you got to respect about Tony, even though he talks like, man, he talks crazy too. He fights the best of the best. He ain't scary. This dude is fake gangster. Like, you, you're trying to start fights with, like, 2-7 and seven or 2-6 and six MMA fighters? I don't even know what the dude's record was that flinched. Like, come on. But, um, it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, hopefully Tony finds some spirit out there if he ever fights Nate 
you know, maybe Fuego can do some prayers, some rituals, <laughs> some something. Send him the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit or whatever. And he goes out there and gives uh, Nate some elbows and <laughs> some one-twos and a Darts choke and an Imanari roll just to end the night. <laughs> but uh, at number seven, you got to go with Derek Lewis versus Stipe Mochacho. Um... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I Honestly, at all the fights uh, that I just said, even the Pantoja Pedro Munoz, I think this fight will never fucking happen because Stipe, it should happen. It makes probably the most sense right now. But this man, Stipe Mochacho, <laughs> is a professional ducker. <laughs> He, I, you know, I know Ed's going to get mad, but Ed can't deny this. This man doesn't want the smoke. It's a fact. He's scary. He don't want to fight nobody, y'all. <laughs> like, I don't blame him for only want to fight for championships. But, like, dude, your last... Oh, my God. His last five, right? Has it been only... F it's probably been Francis and... Oh, yeah. God damn it really has. His last five fights have been DC and Francis. You don't get to do that. I hope you guys know that, right? And then he wants to make another trilogy. You know, he'll have to earn that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, no. I, I hope Francis puts his foot. No. He don't get to do that. Alright? Francis fought like four fucking guys to fight him. He, this guy, nah, G goodbye, ciao, you know, like, uh-uh, this dude, and, it, and he knows, he knows what Derek's gonna do to him, Derek would lay that man out, he would lay him out, alright, Derek, I mean, I'm not, okay, maybe Steve Bay could, you know, could outbox him, weather the storm, take him down a few times, Right? Don't get it twisted. Bay's a great fighter. And I'm not hating on him. But you don't fucking... The man doesn't fight contenders, bro. To, dude, if you look at the top 15... Like, look at the name... Look at his resume right now. Like, come on. He hasn't fought nobody. In the in those rankings. Alistair's gone. Junior's gone. I'm trying to think of some of his last... Like, he hasn't... I don't think he's fought any of those dudes. Besides Francis. Like... I mean, he beat DC. You go live with that. And he got, I know you guys got that over me, but still. Francis fucking sent him to the shadow realm. Um, and, you know, Derek called you punch drunk, bro. All right? And I know that one hurt. When Stipe got... When, when they asked Stipe about him being punch drunk, dude looked like he was about to fucking cry. Go, go watch that submission radio fucking interview. If y'all know what I'm talking about, Y'all, that dude looked like he was about to fucking cry. Alright? Blood said you punched drunk. You owe him. I'm not saying you owe him a fight, but you need to fight him. Someone called me punch drunk. I mean, hey. It's, 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 it's a wrap. <laughs> but, I'm just saying. Um, oh, man. <laughs> I've been going on a rant. At number six. This might surprise some people because I've been saying Jorge Masvidal versus Colby Covington. This is a fight we need to see, but that isn't a fight. That's a beating that we need to see because Colby would smoke him. Um, Colby Covington versus Gilbert Burns. I know what I said on Twitter. I've kind of made jokes, but I've had a change of heart. I want to see Colby Covington versus Snake Boy Burns, and here's why. I am tired of listening to people say that Colby's resume sucks. It's I'm, it's just, I'm done. They act like RDA is a bum, and I've just accepted the fact that, okay, whatever. I guess RDA is a bum. Damian Mai is a bum. He beat them, he beat those guys at a specific time, too. Let's just, like, if we look at the timing, it's a lot different than when fucking these other schmucks beat them, alright? But they don't, they ignore that. Robbie Lawler. Okay, he was past his prime. T. Wood, past his prime. I give you guys that. But this no this nonsense about his resume fucking sucks. His resume fucking sucks. You know what? Bring that no chin, that friend betraying, meet your kids betraying ass, Gilbert Burns. Dude met Usman kids 
and then stabbed the dude behind his back, helped you for the T Wood camp, and then calls you out the next. I mean, like, come on. Dude's a clown, man. So I'm okay with him taking that risk. And it's not a risk, it's an act of justice, you know? And I feel like it, this is an important fight because it closes a chapter. Because I feel like them Brazilian fans, they don't really rock with RDF. <laughs> <laughs> Connor said it best. I'm not gonna lie. Connor had a pretty good line of RDA. He said, "You're not a real Brazilian." What did he say? He said, "Your kids are named T uh, Tom and Arnold." I forgot the line, but uh, <laughs> but Gilbert is a real Brazilian, right? This would be, and I, they could never do it in Brazil. They could never do it there. But uh, this is a way you conclude that feud. Bert Colby. Versus Gilbert. And I'll give one thing to Gilbert. He's been calling out Colby for a minute. And I know I hate on Gilbert a lot. Because he's a snake. But um, he, he ain't scary. And he's a very good fighter. He's a very good fighter. I will never take that away from him. He's skilled and very good. But Colby... Is one of the toughest dudes on this planet. Now, obviously, Gilbert got power. Offensively, Gilbert is, I mean, really good. And, I mean, Colby isn't that good, uh, you know, defensively, too. So, I'm not going to act like Gilbert has terrible defense. So, both of them don't have great defense. So, I, I feel like it'd be a battle of toughness uh, and durability. If Colby can take his power in the first round, I think Colby's good in the striking department. And he can wear on him and just outwork him. Um... I, I think the strike, not the striking, the wrestling would, I think Kobe wouldn't need to take, I mean, if Kobe wants to get quick takedowns, but at this point, I don't even think takedowns even matter in MMA anymore, I think it's all about control, which is just sad, um, I'm, I'm still going to say that, um, but it's a great fight, I want to see the fight a lot, I, stylistically, it's kind of, I, I feel like, you could say there's actually more ways for Gilbert to win. I, I, Colby, I, I look at it like, you know, it's going to be have to decision, right? I, I don't really see him finishing Burns unless it's like Burns completely quits on himself and gets tired. Uh, I could see that, but it's a great fight. I, I love it. I love it stylistically. Um, and I, I, I'd like to see it. I really would. And uh, it would stop all this goddamn Colby's a, is a duck or this and that and all that rah-rah. Um, at number five, TJ Dillashaw versus Jose Aldo. It's a fight we need to see, y'all. That is a fight we need to see. Uh, we need to see that. I'm saying that right now. We need to see that fight. Um, both guys ain't doing nothing. Jan and Al and Aljamain Sterling, and you know, like we don't know when. It hasn't even got booked yet, so. Honestly, to create a legit number one contender before, you know, uh, the Jan and Aljo fight when there is no one that is going to be disputed. Because it's like TJ's, it's Corey Sanhagen. You already beat that guy. You know what I'm saying? That don't look as good. And some people think he lost that. Um, Aljo, no, Aldo, Aldo looked amazing against Font. Some people say... He, you might give it to Aldo. So, honestly, from TJ right now, I'm like, man. I know TJ got to heal up, though. So, <coughs> it's an interesting situation. But, um, I I say you, you, you do you do that fight. You do that fight. You, you create a clear number one contender. And I think that's the fight to do. Uh, at number four, obviously, I just said it. Peter Yan versus Aljamain Starling. That is... I mean, Aljamain Sterling. I would never say it in a million years, but he made this fight a hundred times more inter interesting in the storyline perspective. I mean, I could go off on this fight, but I I'll try to save it for a breakdown. Um, but yeah, he made it way more interesting. Uh, you know, obviously, I might bore you guys with this, but this is the classic Bret Hart, Steve Austin double turn, right? Peter Yan being, you know, Steve uh, Steve Austin, in my opinion, right? He turned into the fucking good guy. 
and Bret Hart being the workhorse kind of turned into the bad guy being Aljamain Sterling. So, uh, but this just happened in real life. So, I mean, this ain't no fucking work or they ain't no shoot, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there ain't no script. I'm sorry, Aljamain. <laughs> there ain't no script for this. And <laughs> them punches are real. But, Aljamain Sterling. One thing you got on your fucking side, I'll give you this. No one believes in you. <laughs> Usually, that's not a good thing if no one believes in you, right? But in a very sport-based setting, that's actually kind of like a good luck charm, right? You have no pressure because you're not supposed to win. So you just got to go out there and give it your best. And if you really... And I actually do think he might have been somewhat injured going in there. Because he fought like... i never seen Ozzyman fight like that. And maybe just Jan is that good. And I think Jan is that good. And I still think Ozzyman at his best will always lose to Jan. But... If I'm being honest... Jan versus Ozzyman Al Sterling... In the rematch, I think is going to be a classic. And I think Aljamain is going to get his fans back. I, I really do. Because I, I, I'm not, I was a fan of Aljo. I know I talked a lot. That's just I did talk a lot of shit about Aljo. Because I'm a big Peter Jan Mark. Right? And I didn't like how people. No, you know what's crazy? Everyone became an Aljo fan after the, the Sanhagen victory. And I was happy when Aljo did that, man. Oh, man, I was happy when he subbed that fucking math teacher. Looking ass, man. God, man, I was so happy when he beat that clown. But, um, Yan ain't, Yan ain't losing, man. And I'm sorry. I, I know Aljo can be, can have all the underdog power he want, but Yan ain't losing. And, uh, hopefully we get a good fight. That's all I can say. Uh, at number three, I gotta go with Yair Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. Uh, this is a great fucking fight. Gotta do it in Mexico City. I, I, obviously, after all this COVID bullshit, fucking stops, man. I, you, know, you never know. I think I might have had COVID, y'all. I was dead for the last three days. I just want to say that. But even that video I did, I think yesterday, I was dead. I was dead. I, I, I fucking willed. I used all the eBay Fight Prediction subscriber soul energy to, to lift my arms up <laughs> to do this video. But uh, I was dead. Um, but, but yeah, man. I, obviously, that's the fight to make. Uh, Yair versus Ortega. It makes more sense in the rankings. It's a great fucking fight. It does scare me that, that Yair doesn't know how to wrestle. Uh, they didn't even teach him how to spell it, I think. Uh, <laughs> you can't be getting taken down by Max. I know, like, the fact that Max took him down means that Max was being scared of the, the striking. But still, like, come on, bro. You can't let that clown take you down, man. Uh, so it does scare me. And Ortega's wrestling has gotten a lot better uh, since the, the first Max fight. So uh, he, could, he could submit him. But hopefully... Yeah, you're just spinning heel kicks that chin, and hopefully somebody cracks it, um, cause he, he is durable. I give him that, but he's taking a lot of damage. I thought Volk was gonna finish him with the ground and pound, but Herb Dean just I guess saw something else. But it is what it is. At number two, though, I gotta go with Leon Edwards versus Kumar Usman, or. As I like to call him, Scammo Boy. Um, this is a fight we got to see. The rematch. Um, oh man, I forgot to put Leon in my other video. I, I forgot my boy Leon. I'm sorry. I hold you. I did you dirty, but I'll do you right here. Uh, and new. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, Leon is beating Usman. And uh, I, think he, I think he beats him. I know some people are saying da 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 this and that. eBay, you're crazy. He's speaking that nonsense. He can't pick against Usman right now. I think he ends this title reign. If Usman beats Leon, he's the GOAT. 
I don't I don't give a fuck about GSP. If he beats uh, both of my boys back to back, I'll call him the GOAT. I'll say this right now. And I'm not even a GSP fan like that, but I've said it straight up. Usman is the second greatest welterweight, right? And some people have kind of, you know, argued with me on Twitter saying he's better than GSP. And I, and I think he could probably beat GSP in a fight, you know, if it's prime versus prime. Because, you know, it's just, he's, I, I'm sorry, but new age fighters, old age, like, I'm sorry. Don't get, don't fucking cry about it in the comments. But, um... In terms of resume, though, and title defenses, I, I give it to to GSP. And I know people are going to say, what about the names? And wouldn't those fighters beat his fighters? And I know that, but you have to respect the history. And you have to respect those guys that became, you know, before you. You just, you have to. You can't disrespect them, right? And maybe it's me just being, because I, I actually, I watched, I, I'm not going to say I was a big GSP, like, nerd. I, I really wasn't. Um... Uh, he really was. Uh, I, only, I didn't get to see a lot of him growing up. I, I only saw like, like the near end of his title reign. I, I didn't see the Matt Hughes run all that night. Like I, I didn't see his. Uh, I didn't even see the Matt Sarah fight growing up. But um, I saw near, near that Condit, that Nick Diaz, that Johnny Hendricks kind of air. Like that's the that's what I saw a GSP and. You know, they weren't bad fights, but they weren't like, oh, he's all-time great, you know? Um, with that, if I'm being honest, if he can beat Leon, from what I've seen and what I know about GSP, obviously I know he has, you know, the Koshek victories, the John Fish victories. Like, don't get it twisted. He, he beat a lot of AKA fighters, too. Um, I, I would give Usman... I'd give him GOAT status at welterweight. I would, I really would. If he beats Leon, because that, I hold Leon in very high regard. I hold Leon in very high regard. And I'm from the USA, by the way. Oakland, California. I'm not, I don't even know why I can talk, man. I gave you guys my fucking location. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not going to be living here for too long, but it doesn't matter. Um... My point is, I, I, I hold him in high regard. And I'm not biased like these, some of these... Dummy UK fans. But um, he is legitimately the most well-rounded fighter I've seen in a very long time. And if Usman can beat him now, again, in a five-round fight, I I'd give Usman GOAT status. I'd be willing to admit it. Um, and yeah, at number one, and I think we're going to go on a rant. The fight, the number one fight to make in 20 fucking 22. You know what I'm about to say. That undercover samurai wannabe bum Yuri Pahowska needs to fight Alexander King Rakic after Rakic takes care of fucking journeyman Jan. They need to fucking fight. If Glover can't take care of business... For some sad reason. And if. Oh man. You see that's. That's what. Disturbs me the most. Is. Seeing that man with the belt. But if I have to fucking see it. Just to see Rakish take it from his goddamn bloody corpse. Then I'm going to be okay with it. Stop. Ducking. That's what I got to say. This man. Has ducked Rakish for too long. This is why I'm going to make this the thumbnail of my video. You're a duck. All Yuri fans. Should have duck emojis near their profiles. Because y'all boy is ducking. I don't understand. There's, been, I, I swear to God. I've watched at least four interviews. And I bet you. There's ten. Of Rakish calling this man out. And this man. Has been radio silent. The last time he fucking. He he even mentioned Rakic. I could tell. He's He don't want nothing to do with that dude. You don't want to fight that dude. You wanted to fight Rakic when he was above you. Right? 
He wanted to fight. I will admit that there was a time when he beat Vulcan Ozdemir and Rakic. I think I just beat Anthony Smith. He said, "Let's fight now," right? And Rakic said, "No, nah, I'm not gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight Thiago Santos," right? And I know some people like to bring that up, but when Yuri beat Reyes, and I'm gonna expose a lot of you this from this time period, and Rakic had beat Santos. And that fight was scheduled, I think, in October. The Jan and Glover fight. There was all that time. All that time for them to fight. To, the, to really clear-cut number one. If Yuri beats Rakic, you know, I'm not talking like this. I just want to I want to have a conclusion, y'all. This is, this is a great fight. I'm not saying... This isn't a great fight. You got the wanna. I, I give this samurai wannabe ponytail rocking undercover. Uh, yeah, undercover, but I'm on to him. I've been. I've had a case on him for a year long or one year long case on this dude. I've been tracking his whereabouts. Zek Republic ass looking mofo, right? He's he's probably one of the better off. He is the best offensive fighter. In, in the light heavyweight division currently. Rakic, on the other hand, in my humble opinion, is the best defensive fighter in the light heavyweight division. And that is a great matchup for both guys. Why not match them up? Let's see what happens. Defense versus offense. Let's see it, right? But instead, instead, this fool, he want to cut lines. What look at what Rakic is doing? He's if he beats these three guys, his resume is already better than Yuri's. If he beats Smith, Santos, and Jan, stop it, stop it. Hopefully Glover mops the floor with this with that clown. But I I would love to see Rakic you know settle settle the score with this dude and his fucking fan base. For the non-stop trash talk. You know. But um, that's it y'all. That's, that's, I've said enough. I said my piece on that. Um, Goddamn 47 minutes man. Whew. Wow. Alright. <laughs> Went pretty long with this. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to follow me on my uh, Instagram and my Twitter. All those links will be down below. In the description box. If you're new, subscribe, go click the notification button, like, comment, share, love y'all, and goodbye.